Toyota as a company has been late to the electric vehicle game, leaning instead on their hybrid vehicles in the United States. But they have finally come out with an electric car. This, the Toyota BZ4X, and it, and it, that's a Subaru badge on the front, isn't it? Cut! Let's try that again. Subaru as a company has been late to the electric vehicle game, but they have finally built one. Now, building an EV costs a lot of money and resources. Resources that Subaru just didn't have on its own, at least not to put an EV out right away, which is why the company has partnered with another large Japanese automaker, that being Toyota, to build their first full electric vehicle. Now, Toyota has its own version of this car called the BZ4X, but this is the Subaru Solterra version. Now, this car came out last year for the 2023 model year, but Subaru has made some important improvements for the 2024 model year. Let's check it out. Now that I've thoroughly joked about how the Subaru Solterra and the Toyota BZ4X are essentially the same car, let's talk about the ways in which they really aren't the same. Subaru did not just put their badges all over a Toyota uh, product and call it a day. They did make some important changes, namely here up front. You'll see that we have this kind of black outline that is what where a grill would be. Obviously, it doesn't need a grill because it's an electric car, but that hexagonal shape kind of mimics what a grill would be. The Toyota version has more of a plain face, so you can kind of identify the two uh, that way via the grill. The headlight shape is a little bit different, as is the lighting signature here on the Subaru. You get a little bit more body coloring up here on the Toyota version. So if we show the two side by side, you can see that they aren't exactly the same. You do get some LED fog lights here on the upper trim levels of the Solterra. I don't believe that you get those on the BZ4X. You do get some nice ground clearance as well. That is a Subaru trademark after all. The base Solterra is going to ride on 18-inch wheels, but we've got the highest trim level. So of course, we've got some larger 19-inch wheels. Those do affect the range, as we'll talk about in a little bit. I also noticed that the wheel arches here here are finished in kind of a plastic, whereas on the BZ4X, they are like a painted gray. So a little bit different vibes. You get kind of a more rugged look on the Solterra. Some people might think that the plastic fenders look a little bit cheap. I do think that the little blue EV badge here on the uh, charger door cover does look a little bit cheap. I'm not a huge fan of that. I think it looks very cartoony and it doesn't really match the kind of futuristic look of uh, the, the rest of this car. I love the red. I believe this is literally Toyota's supersonic red. I think uh, Subaru might just call it something different. The rear end definitely looks more Toyota than Subaru in my personal opinion. It's just very angular. They have put Subaru Subaru symmetrical all-wheel drive on there, even though it's not quite the same as their uh, gas-powered symmetrical all-wheel drive systems. And then over here, you have Solterra with the uh, trim level over here and another one of those EV badges here on the back. You get that kind of weird spoiler with the black roof here on the top touring trim. It's really kind of a funky, cool-looking SUV. I don't really have too much of a problem with it. Now, as we hop into the inside, we're going to see a lot more of that Toyota influence. Because this is the touring trim, we've got these leather seats that are heated and ventilated up here on the front. You can also get this really kind of gorgeous uh, blue and white combination seat. I think it looks fantastic. The Toyota is not available with that, whereas the Subaru is, which is quite nice. One of the changes for the 2024 model year, they have made a few changes here, is this new steering wheel. Although, as you can see, it's not really a wheel because it's kind of squared off. So I've kind of decided to call it a cross between a square and a circle or a squircle. And this is actually a really nice improvement because one of the big problems with the Toyota and the Subaru was that you have this little helper screen. We're gonna go ahead and fire it up so that you can see that a little bit better. And depending on how tall you were, the steering wheel, at, when it would go up like that, would block important uh, information here on this screen. But because of the squircle, it's a little bit hard to see because of the angle of the camera here, but the squircle no longer blocks that. So that is a nice little addition there that they made for 2024. Now, in terms of technology, this is all Toyota. There's nothing Subaru about this uh, the, other than like they renamed it for Subaru. But this is a Toyota infotainment system. You're going to get an 8-inch screen on the 
base model, you're going to get a 12.3, uh, which is what we have here on the limited trim and above. Now, on the top trim, we do have a Harman Kardon audio system with 11 speakers. That is different than what you're going to get on the Toyota BZ4X version of this car. That is a JBL system, and I've listened to both. I haven't listened to them like back to back or anything, but I think this Harman Kardon system sounds a lot better than most JBL systems that I've heard. So it's really cool. The layout here is pretty good. I wish there were a volume knob, but we do have some nice physical buttons below the screen. We have some mostly physical climate controls here, although these are touch capacitive buttons here on the side. A little bit annoying. More physical buttons down here. We do have a button to control our regen braking. No one pedal driving here on the Solterra. A little bit annoying. We do have our X mode controller right here. We do have a 360 camera. I believe this was actually, uh, this is a really good system. I mean, it's, it's a Toyota system where when you put it into reverse, you can actually see the car kind of becoming invisible as you roll along. Really like that. It does beep a lot at you while you are in reverse. We've got some parking assistance here as well. This is going to be a little cubby area. It's kind of see-through, if you can see that. You got your wireless charger in there and you also have your outlet. A Little bit annoying, you can't actually turn the wireless charger off. So unfortunately, when I had my phone plugged in there, it thought I was also still trying to wireless charge and then my phone overheated. I wish there was a button to turn off the wireless charging if I wanna use a wire instead, but I wanna use this little cubby area to store my phone because it is nice to put your phone in there it is kind of the perfect spot for it the back seat is pretty decently sized as well i believe we have a little over 35 inches of legroom. you have a mostly flat floor as well we do have heated seats and usb c ports as well as our air vents here on this top touring trim so pretty luxurious you know not the most luxurious ever but pretty premium for a subaru we do have a nice armrest with cup holders and some little storage as well the legroom i think is very generous the headroom not so much we do have the panoramic roof annoyingly you have this kind of bar in between but it is one piece of glass so it is really a little silly that they had to put this bar there because it would be it would feel a little bit more open if they didn't have that but yeah the headroom not the best but the legroom is very good and last but not least we'll check out the trunk space where the solterra is again pretty decent we've got about 24 cubic feet of space back here in the trunk as you can see you know it's plenty of room we've got our carbon carbon subwoofer here in the back we've got a little bit of space under here you could probably put a charging cable in there but not so much else it opens up to about 64 cubic feet i believe or 68 cubic feet a little bit annoying that you have to do this sort of reach to grab you don't have nice handles to drop them down from here but Good amount of storage space overall. This is a nice size vehicle if you're used to having something like a Subaru Forester or a Toyota RAV4. All right, let's hit the road in the 2024 Toyobaru BZ Solterra. Just kidding. The 2024 Subaru Solterra, as I've joked about and alluded to many times in this video already, this is a project that is a joint venture between Toyota and Subaru. And you're gonna step into this and it's not gonna feel quite like the Subaru you know and love. There are some things about it that feel Subaru-esque, but there is a lot of Toyota DNA in here. I don't necessarily think that's a bad thing. I think Toyota is making some really good cars right now, but that's just something you're gonna have to keep in mind when you hop in uh, to drive the Subaru Solterra or you look to go buy one. All Solterras are gonna come with two electric motors, one in the front, one in the back. Subaru actually calls them Star Drive electric motors because, you know, they had to put their little branding on everything. You can actually get the Toyota version, the BZ4X, with just a single motor on the front axle. But you know, Subaru is all about that symmetrical all wheel drive life. So they had to offer a dual motor as standard. You cannot get this car with just a front motor. Those two motors combined to produce pretty decent output, 215 horsepower, 249 pound feet of torque. Those numbers seem kind of low even when comparing to other electric vehicles in this segment but they're quicker than you might think just based on those numbers in fact i believe the zero to 60 time is quoted at around six and a half seconds but let's see if we can do it a little bit quicker i'm going to go ahead and set it up on my little drag timer here we're going to come to a stop i'll put the car into power mode and let's see how it gets off the line here all right good shove building up speed there's 60 miles an hour that was zero to 60 in 
6.38 seconds, and it's a little damp out, not ideal conditions. 6.38 seconds is really not bad. I think that's actually quicker than Subaru would claim it would do. This is not a slow car. Like I don't think like a four-cylinder Subaru Forester would hit 60 that quickly. Now that's really not bad considering performance is not the point of this car. Subaru was not trying to make a sporty SUV here, but I think it is pretty darn quick. We do have a little bit of off-road capability. Subaru touts that you get over eight inches of ground clearance, which is more than other EVs in this segment. And we do have the symmetrical all-wheel drive with an X mode, so you can set it to snow and dirt or deep snow and mud but I really don't suspect that too many people are gonna be off-roading with their Solterra. What I do suspect more people will care about is the Subaru EyeSight Safety Suite. So this car already had a ton of safety technology in it for the 2023 model year, and they've just improved it even more for 2024. We now have a driver attention monitor here, uh, right in front of the steering squircle. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna read my face and make sure that I'm not uh, looking away from the uh, road here. And what you just heard was the front collision avoidance. We have both rear cross traffic and front collision avoidance. This car beeps at you constantly. If you are not a fan of a car beeping at you to let you know that you're doing something wrong, you are going to hate the Solterra. It's really great for like a first time driver, maybe an elderly driver that really needs to be told uh, when they're straying out of a lane or when they're not paying attention. But if you're the type of person that doesn't like that, this car, it kind of reminds me of the scene from Anchorman uh, where he's reading his, or he's prepping to go on air and he's going, save the children! Save the children! The children! <laughs> it's like that. It's panicked about basically everything that you do. So if you don't like that, uh, you can kind of turn some of it off, but this car is very intrusive into the way you drive. Another new feature is that this car can actually offer hands-free driving at speeds of up to 25 miles an hour. Not super useful. This is not like the highway driving assist that you would get from General Motors or some other companies, uh, but it could help in a traffic jam if you're sitting on the highway, you know, and you, and you just want to relax. You're stuck, stuck in stop and go traffic. So it'll do a lot of the steering and stuff for you. It'll do it hands-free up to 25 miles an hour. That's a nice little addition for the 2024 model year, but it doesn't drastically change how I feel about this car. All in all, this is not a world changing electric vehicle to drive, but it's very comfortable. It's very quiet because it's electric. The responsiveness is great. Does it feel like a Toyota? Kind of, but it feels a little bit Subaru-y too. They're all about safety and Toyota is too. So it really was a nice joint venture between the two cars. But here's where you have to decide whether or not the Solterra is going to work for your lifestyle. We've only got one battery size. It's a 72.8 kilowatt hour battery. There are bigger batteries within the segment. Only 64 kilowatt hours of that are usable. And the range is just not amazing for 2024 model year. 227 miles is what you're going to get if you get the premium trim. That's going to drop down to just 222 miles if you get the limited or the top touring trim that we've been driving. Now, charging it on a level two outlet actually got a little bit quicker for the 2024 model year. You can now charge at 7.6 kilowatts, assuming your home charger can do that. That's up from 6.6 .6 kilowatts. You're going to get from, a, from almost empty to a full charge in just about nine hours. That means you can easily do the charge overnight, just leave it. You wake up in the morning, you should have a full charge. The problem is, is that with that limited range and the slow fast charging speed, this car will only do a hundred kilowatts peak. Uh, so you're really not charging as fast as some other cars, especially not the Korean cars from Hyundai and Kia that can charge at like 270 kilowatts. But Subaru and Toyota have improved the charging curve uh, through some battery thermal management and things like that. So it used to take 50 minutes to get from 10% to 80% charge on a DC fast charger. Now that time is gonna take just 35 minutes. That is a huge improvement and a major reason why I would consider the 2024 Solterra over a 2023, not necessarily worth trading in your 2023, uh, but if you can find a 2024, it's definitely gonna charge faster. It's also gonna precondition the battery better in cold temperatures, so the range shouldn't be quite as effective as it was last year, because that was a problem for both the Toyota and the Subaru in the cold. 
That wraps up our time with the 2024 Subaru Solterra. Pricing for the premium trim starts at about $45,000. That is the same price as the 2023 model year, so I like how Subaru was able to make some improvements without increasing the price. But 45 grand is still rather on the high side, especially considering that the range and the charging speeds are nowhere near class leading. Now you're going to step up to about 48.5 to get the limited trim and this touring trim as you see it is about $53,000. So it is quite expensive. You do not get the $7,500 federal tax credit at the moment because this car is not built in the United States. However, you do get that on all EVs so long as you lease them. So I think there are gonna be some huge incentives from Subaru to get people to lease this car. This could be a really nice car if you're just looking for a runabout that's quiet and comfortable and has a decent amount of space. I bet you, you can get this car in a lease for less than you would probably pay for a fully loaded Outback or Forester. Don't quote me on that. Go in, run the numbers for yourself. It may vary depending on your state, but that could be a good reason to choose a Subaru Solterra if you're already entrenched in the Subaru brand, or maybe you really like how Toyota builds cars, but you want to venture out from something with a Toyota badge. Let me know if you've enjoyed this review of the 2024 Subaru Solterra. For more videos like it, be sure to like, subscribe, and ring that notification bell to be alerted of our latest videos. I'll see you next time.